Hey gang, welcome back to Inverted Suits Laboratory. What you just saw was me actually cutting these carbon fiber rods that we're gonna be using inside the upper section of Preter. And well, I guess I should also say welcome back to Project Preter. This week, we're working on the upper body section. So I cut, actually I cut eight of these rods. I cut two more than I needed just to make sure I had what I needed. But I cut six carbon fiber rods. Um, they're not all perfectly the same length, but they're really close. Um, that will be going inside the three body sections that make up the upper body of Preter. So what we're actually gonna do is, um, basically I've been test fitting them just to make sure they all fit um, in all the holes on everything. And I've already proven that everything fits together really well. So we're gonna be taking some gap filling super glue and some quick set and gluing this thing together. Uh, my plan is actually to glue every single one of these in here um, then like run a rim around, seat this over um, with some glue having been dropped down the hole. So as I slide it down, I'm basically trying to glue along the entire length of the shaft. And I'll do the same thing where I run glue around this and put some in the holes as I set it on there. So we're going to do this a little bit time lapse like, but let's get going. All right, well, it didn't actually take very long to get that all glued together. Um, when I glued the carbon rods in, I actually put them down in here and you noticed I spun them around. That was to try and coat the entire carbon rod in glue. I then put the glue in this body tube as I slid it down to kind of try and get glue over the entire length. And then I tried to spin the uh, carbon rods once they were already in there. Uh, that ended up getting a lot of glue all over my hands, but I did spin each rod at least 180 degrees, so there should be a good coating of glue around the entirety of each rod. Uh, when I was putting glue in the hole, I made sure I put like pretty s significant squeezes of glue in there to coat it really well. Um, then I put quite a bit of glue up inside the upper six holes and on between the seams. You saw I've added a little more because I didn't like how much there was. But that basically generates our entire upper, upper body section. Now, I wish I could fly it just like this, but there's still more work to do on this. And the cat screams. Um, but the next step is actually going to be glassing it. All right, if it isn't obvious, this thing is massive. So this is my Elegoo Neptune Max. And we just finished printing a 151 hour print. Let me actually get this over here. Cause like we actually have that on the screen. This is a 151 hour print. That is just about six and a half days. Uh, let me make sure you guys are lined up still. Let's bring it up a little bit. To print this 18 inch tall fin can. So, we just finished it, but a minute or two ago, and we're gonna peel it off the bed. Oh, if we can even get the bed off. Oh, goodness. 
Uh, apparently we don't peel the bed off. Apparently we peel the print off the bed. Oh wow. This thing is massive. Absolutely ginormous 3D print right here. Trying to clean all this support material off. So it'll still require a little bit further cleanup past just what I'm showing you here. Um, but this is the FinCan for Preter. Um, and a bunch of you are probably wondering why we're looking at this right now and not at fiberglassing. Well, I actually kind of changed the course of this video. I said I was going to fiberglass. I'm sorry, I'm not. Um, I had a chance to get this print going and actually go ahead and get the entire lower body assembled. So we're going to take a shot at building the entire lower body. We're going to clean this print up the rest of the way and try and get it fully prepped for fiberglass as well and then in our next video we will be glassing both the upper and the lower body tube sections which is kind of insane but we'll also need to make sure we test fit our motor tube uh, make sure it fits in here since we put a liner in here which there'll be a fiberglass liner in there and a couple other things will need to be compared against it I am now not remembering where I set things down. Oh, there it is. And then we have the upper part of this. This fin can was originally meant to be 24 inches long, but the LU Neptune Max can only go up to 20, so we limited this print to 18 and then printed the remaining six over here, which now sounds like a maraca. So let's get this cleaned up and get it assembled. All right, so we are back <clears throat> with this considerably stacked up I went ahead and <clears throat> man my throat is a little rough right now dry fit all the pieces together just to see how big it would be and get everything lined up um, had a few things that didn't quite go the way I wanted them to but it's really not going to affect the way this works um, what I'm trying to do right now is actually uh, basically number the holes I have around and let's get some stuff out of the way and redo this alrighty so I basically have six carbon fiber rods that run the entire length of the body um, it's, it's like 34 inches of carbon fiber tube in this rocket body because it doesn't go very far into this top section only about an inch and then it only goes a couple inches into my fin can um, I've got additional stiffeners in there to stiffen it up, but that's really not the area we're focusing on today. We're trying to just get the core body together. Also, the uh, uh, this is the fiberglass motor mount tube that will go inside the fin can. So that's like our main stiffening member down there. Whereas this is just to stiffen the body here to have it resist shearing apart. Aside from the fact that we're going to have fiberglass wrapped around the outside of this, which is... Oh my goodness, all sorts of ridiculous. But I did have a little issue where I ended up with these shorter bits here at the top, which isn't the end of the world. The big thing is trying to keep them all in a line. So I am going to grab a piece of tape real quick <coughs> and lay that out and number them on my table because that is going to be the easiest way. I think to keep track of all six of these as I go down. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm going to pull out one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm actually going to number the body tube on the way down as well. So we're gonna end up with one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then again, we end up with one, two, three, 
four, five, and six. Up and off. Now down here we end up with one, two, three, four, five, and six to try and keep our alignment the same. Now for this part, I actually want to go ahead and put in my fiberglass tube. Um, I don't want to accidentally glue this in, so I do need to be careful. I don't actually know how visible this is. Let's readjust the camera, make sure it's all on shot. All right, so I just dropped the fiberglass tube in here um, and we're gonna be using my super glue. Initially, I'm gonna glue all the carbon fiber rods into their respective hole. Then I'm gonna put glue around the face here and then glue on the first section, which is actually just the extension of the fin can up. So, that's all we're doing is just coming around here and spreading that glue. have to I will move to my thinner glue I like this thicker glue personally it's gap filling medium or gap filling medium thickness glue and it's my personal preference for this stuff and then we're gonna go ahead and run around CA glue as a reminder some may know this because I say it a lot CA glue is a uh, bind is a huh, solvent and binder for PETG, which is what this entire rocket is printed out of. So, whole thing printed out of PETG, whole thing binds together really nicely. Make sure we line back up one and two. Keep track of these extensions had to do. Alright, and then I like to give all the tubes, well, as much of a spin as I can if they haven't already set. Some of these are already starting to set, so we're just going to keep cruising. CA glue kind of is known for setting really quickly sometimes. So, uh, actually this was the next one up. So, get this whole thing aligned. So we go down. Anything left that'll spin, I'm gonna spin. Then we're gonna just run rings of CA glue around. Don't want to use up too much of this since we are running low on CA glue. Let's line up. CA glue this buddy together. Alright, we're actually going to go ahead and I'm going to put dabs of CA glue around the top of these shafts before I go and slide this on top. Set that together. And now we are setting each individual shaft basically into its hole. If I do it right, there should only be about an inch sticking out. So that's kind of our indication of not messing this up. Alright, well we're going to 
play the whatever fits where it fits game. Nope. Yep. Not perfect, but I will take it. Get a bunch of this on top. Go after the tops of my various rings. All right, I'm not proud of what I just did, but I definitely just took a hammer to this to get it to all line up. Um, the rods were just off by a little bit, so I just nailed them down in there a bit better. Uh, we'll actually just rotate that up, try and get this kind of tube that's in the way out of the way. All right, so that is the top glued on. Um, this honestly looks absolutely ridiculous. But that's okay. That's that's kind of the way it's anticipated to look at the moment. Um, like we'll we'll put this together real quick. So this is my lower body tube. Um, at this point, it is basically set. I'm going to guarantee it's set by spritzing it with starter or accelerator, which doesn't take much more than just a quick touch of this stuff down the side and it goes off pretty much instantly. Very nice and handy thing to have happen. All right, so real quick, I wanna give you guys kind of a demonstration of how big this rocket is um, before I go into some general discussion. Because um, in the next episode, we will glass this entire rocket. Uh, together and so this is the lower body tube we're gonna actually move things around here real quick get way back here that's still not far enough this thing's tall all right intimate look at the workshop cool all right so this is the upper body tube in comparison to me I'm about six foot tall six foot six one so this this is not like a short rocket uh, using a quick tape measure because I don't remember off the top of my head how tall this is we are at 56 inches on our lower body tube and fin can and then we will add one inch of thickness so that is our electronics bay we built last time which We've got some discussion on that because things have had to change a bit. And then what you saw previously assembled in this video was the upper body tube. When I put the upper body tube on here, this thing is just under seven foot tall. Um, like it is absolutely monstrous right now. I can do a quick tip to tail measurement if I don't knock this thing over. Current tail to the top is 81 inches and I don't even have my nose cone on there yet like that's 81 inches up I've got another at least two and a half foot in nose cone the anticipated height of this thing was a little over nine feet so if I start to lean this over as terrifying a concept as that is put the nose cone on it there's the nose cone on this rocket and this thing is a behemoth of a rocket. She is five inches in diameter, just over nine foot tall total height. Uh, there is a little bit of shimming that'll have to be done on all the body tubes, um, just part of the way it is. And with the nose cone, I cannot even stand this up down here because it's only seven foot to my rafters and eight foot to the floorboards above. Like, I do not have nine foot of space to set this up in. I hope to set this up outside later on, but I don't really wanna test my luck when nothing is glassed. I would like to uh, not break this before I finish reinforcing it. 
So, like, a quick comparison here, like, my nose cone to my upper body tube, like, the nose cone is taller than my upper body tube. Electronics bay and everything is just looking so good. Um, we also have the thrust plate that will go on the back, as well as the motor retention. So these two will get assembled at a later point and I will bolt it on to the bottom of this rocket. Uh, something I did not show off and I will go ahead and do right now. So on the bottom of the rocket there's actually a recess in here for this thrust plate to sit into and I can get that to sit in there. And so the thrust plate sits right on there and transfers all the force of the motor evenly up the rocket body so that we're not dealing with uh, layer lines within the rocket actually holding the force and putting it all into a thrust plate on here. I just consider that a really smart idea when building something like this. So you really never know what you're going to get in a rocket and I can't get that back out at the moment. So it's now another quarter inch taller. Yay. So, real quick before we end this video, I want to bring you guys in a little closer and we'll do a quick discussion on the electronic space situation. So, sorry for a very, very candid view of the workshop. Hopefully you all enjoyed that. All right, so I sent this to my mentors, the video I put out uh, two weeks ago and was showing them what I was doing, my mentors, and discussing like how I wanted to use these 3D printed bulk plates. They were quick to remind me um, that I'm doing a lot of innovation on this rocket already. So like the fact that I'm doing a 3D printed airframe with fiberglass lay or layup over it is a lot. That 3D printing a bulkhead, as much as I love the 3D print, probably isn't the smartest place for me to be investing resources in a complex build like this. It's something I can pursue once I've completed my level three cert flight, but uh, they really stressed that if I wanted to fly that, I was gonna have to bring lots of proof of testing to prove that it wouldn't shear, which I was planning to do, but they really made the comment to like not get bogged down in the weeds of doing a fun project when there's like fiberglass bulk plates you can buy or aluminum bulk plates you can buy that will do the exact same job and like do it just as well and you'll run into very, very little issues. So what we're gonna end up doing is buying fiberglass bulk plates for this either end and we will have um, this fiberglassed up rather than having these 3D printed plates on the end. So unfortunately we're ditching 3D printing here but it really is a good thing. Uh, my mentors were very much correct in the fact that like I was trying to do a little bit too much and it's a good place for them to call me back. So again thanks for watching Yang. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video where we assembled all of the 3D printed components for Prater. Uh, in the next video, we are going to be doing all of the fiberglass work on that. Uh, it's probably gonna be a month or more before that video comes out because doing the fiberglass layup on this is not going to be a short task. This is almost six foot of uh, glass just on the lower body tube section and there's easily uh, two foot on the upper body tube. So I wanna make sure we get it done right doing about four to six layers and just it's going to take some time. So I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, gang.